This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Jihadi Psychopath by Dr. Jamie Glazov. I will tell you as an expert on Sharia, as a former child bride who has suffered and faced my own jihadi psychopath, I want you to go and order this book on Amazon.com or go to jamieglazov.com. Get a copy for yourself. You know why? Because you need to be equipped with the knowledge to fight our enemy so you can save your daughters and your granddaughters from future of Islam. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazoff moment. Tonight, Tlaib and Omar, the eternal cry bullies. My friends, we're seeing constant controversy now over Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. It seems like almost every day they're making certain comments, uh, just horrendous comments filled with hatred and uh, anti-Semitism and, and, and anti-Americanism and all, and all kinds of things. And it's not just telling what comments they're making, but it, the, the trigger the, the controversies, it's very telling the way they're responding to the comments they're making. And uh, my book that has recently come out, The Jihad is Psychopath, shows that this, this is completely expected because what's happening here is straight out of the psychopath's textbook completely out of the psychopath's game, the charade, the agenda, the tactics, because when you perpetrate, you make yourself the victim. And the victim that you're, that you're abusing becomes the perpetrator and you become the victim. This is happening constantly now. And so I wanted to, to call it out because if you want to really learn why this is happening, read my book. And this is connected to the world of the cry bully. Now, recently, for instance, Rashida Tlaib made her controversial statement about the calming feeling, quote unquote, the calming feeling that she gets when she which, which she gets when she thinks about the Holocaust. And yes, we know that she wasn't specifically saying that the Holocaust gives her a calming feeling. And what she had meant was that she gets a calming feeling about how her ancestors had given Jews a safe haven in the Middle East after the Holocaust. Now, I just did a video that shows that this is horrendous in many ways because, to begin with, it's not even true. And so it's, it's, a, it's a violent statement. It's a statement that's connected to Holocaust denial. It's a hateful statement. And, um, and so watch, and I explain all of this in my previous moment. It's called Tlaib and Palestinians is safe haven for Jews. Just look it up. And I don't have the time here right now to go into that statement. My point here today is what happens after Tlaib makes a statement like that. Now, Ilhan Omar also making her anti-Semitic statements, her hateful statements about 9-11 and, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that she's engaging in. The key here is how Tlaib and Omar respond and how their supporters are responding. And so what's happening here is... Every time they're engaging in their hatred, there's a certain stealth jihad that's happening here. And again, the psychopathic game, because they act like victims right after they make their hateful statements. They play the victim race card every time. And again, it's straight out of the psychopathic uh, playbook, okay? This is what psychopaths do. So let me just give you an example. Recently, Rashida Tlaib in a tweet uh, May 12th, 2019, she says in a tweet, this is after the controversy of the calming feeling connected to the Holocaust, quote, policing my words, twisting and turning them to ignite vile attacks on me will not work. All of you who are trying to silence me will fail miserably. I will never allow you to take my words out of context to push your racist and hateful agenda. The truth will always prevail, end of quote. Okay, so she's the victim. Her words are being taken out of context and the people that are taking them out of context, of course, are racists. So the racist card is being pulled here. She's the victim, she's being misunderstood. We know very well that she wasn't being misunderstood. You can go read about it all, watch my video, horrible thing that she said. 
because her ancestors did not provide a safe haven in the least. It was actually the very opposite. Don't have the time here again. Watch my video and read up on it in any credible magazine. Ilhan Omar, in a tweet on May 13th, in response to Liz Cheney, who had nobly called her out on, on uh, or excuse me, called out Tlaib on Twitter, and then Omar you know, rushes to the defense of Rashida Tlaib, and this is what Omar tweets to Cheney, or in response to Cheney, how you know, the tweet goes on top when you retweet with a comment. Quote, give it up. We all know you never met a Muslim you didn't want to vilify, exclamation mark. Your deep-seated hate and Islamophobia might be a tool to rally your base, but won't get rid your colleagues. You just have to deal, end of quote. So what's happening here, this tactic of libeling the kafir, the unbeliever, is a hater of all Muslims. You see what's happening here? So Liz Cheney is actually just calling out Tlaib on an on a awful, awful historical inaccuracy, on a lie. But what Omar does is try to say that Liz Cheney hates all Muslims. Now this tactic of libeling, of slandering the kafir is a hater of all Muslim people. This is a central ingredient in the Islamic supremacist malicious psychopathic game. And I document, this, I document this in my book. So this is what they do. They're engaged in their ideological war. Whenever jihad happens or stealth jihad happens and the kafir tries to protect himself or herself the fingers pointed right away, and you're a racist, you hate all Muslim people, you're an Islamophobe, and so the, so the victim becomes the perpetrator, and the perpetrators become the victims. Keep an eye on this. So those, those two tweets that I just uh, showed, this is a symbol of really what's going on here. Keep an eye on this, because this is accelerating. And so we have Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, is we know that are connected to CARE and other groups that are actual Muslim Brotherhood front groups, like CARE is a Muslim fr Brotherhood front group. So if Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar are connected to CARE and Rashida Tlaib and Omar are in our government, then the question has to be asked, is the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas now in our government? It's just a question. Islamic supremacism, my friends, is speeding up. It's accelerating its agenda, and they're very successful, okay? And so keep in mind as you watch, especially Tlaib and Omar, as they make these statements, these horrible statements that they make, and then all of a sudden, they start sulking afterwards that they're the victims, they're pouting afterwards, they've been mistreated, and guess what? The people that are actually trying to stand up for truth and justice become, in their, in their libels, haters of all Muslim people, white supremacists, Islamophobe, all of that stuff, racists, bigots, they hate all Muslim people, etc. This is all a lie. But this is how the cry bully works in this context. So Daniel Greenfield, for instance, has written about the cry bully. Look up Daniel Greenfield in the cry bully. He's done great work on this. And I also document how the cry bully works in terms of this whole jihadist psychopathic game. In my book, Jihadist Psychopath. Keep an eye on it. So as we continue to watch Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and others, making statements how they do, and then how they behave afterwards, you will understand what's going on. It's the cry bully game, and it's right out of the playbook of the jihadist psychopath. We'll see you soon. Good night.